Good morning, church. It's so lovely to come into your homes this morning through the live stream. I believe you're all doing well as we have moved to level three. It's um, a different scenario in level three. Not many changes, but uh, at least we got few changes by the government. I am Pastor Chris and this is my lovely wife, Pastor Judy, and we are pastoring the River Christian Church, Pukikoi. Amen. That's right. It's a great privilege for us to come to your home through live stream. I know even at level three, we, will, we cannot come together, but it's a great privilege. We have this technology that we could come to your home through, uh, through live stream, through Facebook Live. Also, the, just to Reminder, at 12 o'clock New Zealand time, we appear on YouTube. So, um, yeah, you, the same service will be replayed on YouTube. Okay, uh, and for moving on, how many of you do go to McD's or uh, KFC? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you were waiting for it. And moving down to level three, you would have already tasted some of the uh, takeaways and um, enjoyed <laughs> the food. And um, yeah, how? And also in our home, it works differently because I'm on lockdown, uh, my myself and my daughter. And um, but Chris had to work the whole time. How was your bubble well uh, my bubble I've been going to work every day because I come under essential service so traveling to work has been amazing going at 120 no cop oh no that's not true okay I've been going under 100 and um, but I was enjoying my drive, no cars on the road, you just cruise to your work and uh, there's not many uh, of uh, them working in the building, there's only a few people, just have a chat with them, do my work and come back home. Again, the roads are empty, not many people on the road. That's been my bubble, actually. How it's been your bubble? Not too bad. I have a, we have an eight-year-old daughter and I've been homeschooling her. This is my first time homeschooling a, a child from home. And then um, it's a new learning curve for me too and um, help make her, get her occupied with the studies and find out what's assigned to her for that day and yeah it's it's been good we we love the company and also working through throughout the day um yeah it's it, it keeps me busy oh that's good judy that you are in your bubble and especially being taking on the teacher role for our eight year old if you've been watching us um, uh, for the very first time this morning we want to extend a personal invitation to you thank you for joining us on behalf of the river church Pukikoi. Thanks that you would you you were able to join us this morning. Wonderful. Amen. Let's go. We're going to move to birthdays and anniversaries, Judy. Yes. Uh, so for those who had celebrated your birthday or anniversary in the past week and uh, or in the coming next two days, we want to extend our warm wishes to you. Happy birthday and wedding anniversary. And Melissa is celebrating her birthday today. Happy birthday, Melissa. Our warm wishes to you for your birthday. Hope you're celebrating well. And you know what? One of our wonderful church members, <laughs> a couple, yeah. celebrated their 12th wedding Whoa. anniversary last Sunday. And that is no one but Barry and Katrina. <laughs> Happy anniversary to you guys. And also, we have a picture to show how they did their ANZAC service on Saturday. The, the girls made poppy wreaths and they fly New Zealand flags. And that's how they, they did the ANZAC service. So wonderful uh, to celebrate your anniversary. And we, we are so blessed to have you as part of our church family. You guys are amazing. Yeah. God bless. 
bless you. And this morning, actually, I was uh, reading um, Psalm 23, the yeah. verse, uh, verse 6. This is for everyone. The word of God goes on like this. It's in the Amplified Version. Surely goodness and mercy mm -hmm. and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell forever in the house and in the presence of the Lord. I believe this word I'm holding on and praying and believing for you, everyone who is yes. watching as well. Let goodness and mercy and unfailing love of God, let it follow all your days. Mm -hmm. And also it says, and I will dwell in the house and another in, in, in the Amplified, it says in the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I will dwell in the presence of the Lord. I pray that that you will continue to experience the presence of God in your home or in your bubble, in your family. Continually, you will experience his presence and you will continue to dwell in his presence. Amen. Amen. You want me to sing? Oh, no, let's play the video. <laughs> Here it comes. That's a lovely birthday song. And then just mo moving on to the River Kids uh, program. Every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m., we have a River Kids program that is will be on Facebook as well as on YouTube. You can always log on to the River um, Church Pukikoi Facebook page and it will go live. It starts at 9.30. It is run by our wonderful Kids Church Pastor Jennifer and also the Morton's children, Analia and Jaden. Every time when I see that program, I really enjoy it. My daughter keeps nagging me saying, Dad, Dad, the program is going to start. If you have kids at home, I, I trust they are going to enjoy this program. It's an amazing program. Yeah, yeah, we love, my, my daughter loves uh, the kids program. And also we have uh, River Youth that happens throughout during the week. If you have young children, if you have teenage kids, and if you have uh, somebody whom you know who would like to join the River Youth, please uh, contact this uh, page. You, the information is down here below. So you can go into this page and contact the youth pastor Pastor Claire, she's an amazing woman of God, and she will get in touch with you, give you the Zoom details. The youth ministry is still happening via online, and you can contact uh, and get the details. And also, uh, we have a connect group every Wednesday evening. Yeah, so our connect group runs, it's of course still the Zoom through Zoom, so it runs every Wednesday at 7.15 p.m. and um, we have our different uh, uh, members joining the zoom meeting to have a time of uh, worship and word and also mainly you know to see them face to face so it's a lovely group if you like to be part of the group you can always uh, uh, write contact to me contact. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the information will be down below and you can contact me that way so you will get the zoom id so you can join us that way anybody else who's not part of the pukikori church can also join and there are uh, there's another couple who join us from a different part of auckland and we are so privileged to connect and talk and yeah. chat and it's a great blessing during the week mm. And as you know, Mother's Day is just around the corner. We have something coming up for the Mother's Day. There's a competition that if you go into our River Christian Church Pukekoi Facebook page, you can nominate your mother or you can also nominate someone else uh, for uh, for this and you all you need to do is just tag their name and all the instruction what to do is in that facebook page so please 
go visit our Facebook page and nominate your mother or someone special in your life and let us know why you want to nominate them. Now we are going to move into a time of prayer. It is really very important that we pray for our nation and we pray for our government. So uh, wherever you are, I would just request you to just close your eyes as Judy is going to lead us in a prayer. Let's take a few minutes to pray. Father, we come before your presence in Jesus' name. As a church, we come before your presence, Lord, that you are God who reigns and rules over every circumstance, over every situation. Lord, even during this time, you, nothing is a surprise to you. You have a redemptive plan for every situation. Lord, I pray that as we as body of Christ will rise up in power and in authority during this time as your word says in Daniel 11 that they that know their God will be strong and they shall do exploits Lord we want to be people who will rise up and do exploits and we will be people who will know our God during this time and your word says that as you take root downwards you will bear fruit upwards we want to see these things happen within the body of Christ as your word says you will pour out your spirit Spirit upon all flesh. Lord, I, I pray that we will receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit and we will rise up with power and authority, God, and we will know the authority that we carry because of the relationship that we have with you. And Lord, I pray that many things will happen. Many breakthroughs will take place. Healings and miracles will take place, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, also pray for a, a rain in the North Island. Lord, as we come to your presence and we seek your face and we humble ourselves and pray, you said you will heal our land. Lord, I pray that the rain will come to replenish our land and there will be healing in our land, God. And I pray for your blessing over New Zealand. We bring all this to your presence with humility and we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen and Amen. During the lockdown at level four, some of our church members were the salt and light to the community. They did something to be a blessing to people around them whether they knew them or did not know them. So I asked people to post some of their stories onto the Facebook page. And our wonderful families have posted what they were up to during the lockdown period. So that's what I'm going to read it out to you. First one, I want to read Robert and Melissa, their post. If they said like this, we took a walk down our road to put some notes in our neighbors' mailboxes, just asking how they're doing and making sure they have our contact information in case they need anything. I received two calls today from neighbors. We haven't had a chance to meet yet, thank, thanking us and checking if we were doing all right as well. It wasn't much, but was a simple thing we could do to be a salt and light. This is from Karina. We brought groceries and delivered to an elderly lady who lives on her own. She doesn't drive and is 10 minutes drive from us. She was delighted with the items. I had handpicked as it was just what she needed and was ever so grateful. And next one is from Maria and Torben. We bought rubbish bins off the street for a neighbor who's not currently living at his house, so it wasn't so obvious that the house was empty. Shared the link to the Sunday services on my Facebook page and local community page, supporting all the family members by doing their online food orders for them. That's great, Maria. And Torben has commented, 
to that uh, post he said the guy was the was in the process of moving houses when covid-19 struck and has to, had to stay at his previous place we've been talking heaps to our neighbors as well as building relationships at a 3 meter distance of course we also offered to get groceries for two of our neighbors and one who's a solo mother and the other had been in isolation for a week before lockdown because they had just come back from holiday this is from us the dorsets we found two single people in our neighborhood and shared food with them of course from the distance i realized that we don't need to go or travel too far to find people in need and they were living very close to us also connected with someone who was living in spain you know spain is one of the most affected countries and was connected with a friend of mine and prayed with her and encouraged her during this time so being the salt and light to people far and near this is from ben and riam that they mowed the lawn for an un unknown neighbor around the corner she was a lady from iraq she was so surprised and very appreciated she wanted to know which church we were from she wanted to visit the church riam gave her the website for the sunday service praise god she was so grateful that's amazing This is from Katrina Berry and the kids. Lots of messaging families to check if they were okay. Made lots of jams and jellies to add to the local share box. Also took some fruits of our trees to the local share box. That's great. This is from the Crodus family Ash and Karen took some kiwi fruit to the neighbors maybe not salt to the community but being vitamin c that's great you were amazing everyone who posted in on facebook page thank you and you even during the lockdown 4 or lockdown 3 doesn't matter we can still continue to be the salt and light to the community and to the people around us God bless you for every work that you do, every effort you take to be a blessing to someone else during this time. Why don't we go into a time of worship? Let's take some time and worship the Lord. I know you're at home and it must be weird that um that you're watching online everything and you're sitting down if you want to stand up during this time or even while sitting down if you want to close your eyes and lift your hands and mm. worship the lord just do it because every time that's what we notice when we did a connect group last wednesday when we worship the lord uh via zoom and that when we lifted up our voices and when we sang there was something that we felt so free we uh, something in our spirit just lifted up so i believe that's what happens when we worship the lord yeah, sure. so just i encourage you uh, don't worry about your voice or uh, the, uh, your family member who is sitting right next to you it's okay forget about everything just close your eyes or just uh, connect yourself during mm. this time and worship together So 
you about giving this morning we support a missionary in a, who's serving the Lord in a very remote place as I was thinking about him and his family during this time all I could do was just pray for him and we have no contact with him we don't know how things are at his end and how he is doing and his family how he's serving the Lord because uh, I don't think there is very good internet facility he has uh, in the place where he's living. And also 
for us to send the funds to him is a bit of a challenge at this point because of the lockdown and everything that's happening. But um, since we have come down to level three, it is a little more easier for us to send the funds to him. And um, it is quite a bit of a lengthy process. A lot of manual work is involved and a lot of people are involved in getting the funds reach him. So as I was thinking about that, I was reading 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2. And Paul is living in Jerusalem and he is writing to the Corinth church. He says, on the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income, saving it up so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. Paul is living in a different town and he was living during the time where there was no bank transfer available or no ba online banking was there or no Tithely app was there. So he was teaching the people to set aside some money on the first day of every week. That is, that is Sunday for us. So that's what he's saying that he was telling them, he's teaching them Bring in a discipline of setting some money aside the first day of every week so that when I come there, I can collect the money. At that time, you don't need to do the off special offering. And as I was thinking about that and the situation with the missionary that we support in the remote place, there the situation, the, the current circumstance that we live here in New Zealand is different. I don't have to go through a lengthy process to send my offering to church. All I need to do is just pick up my phone and choose one of the options to give to the Lord. And I was thinking, I'm so privileged that this way that I can honor the Lord. I can, I mean, with my giving, because that's what Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10 says. With your giving, with honor the Lord with your, with your produce, with your income, you honor the Lord. So this is, I consider this as a privilege that I get to give. Even during this time, there is no issue for me to give. Not like somebody who is living in a far off remote place or, or like Paul in living in a season time where there was no technology. So why are we waiting? Today is the first day of the week. Just pick up your phone and choose one of the options, how you want to give and make a decision and give. All we have to do is just make a decision to give to the Lord and to honor Him. Now, Beth is going to lead us in worship. What a beautiful name it is. Why don't we take this moment and give to the Lord?
Well, this morning it is our privilege to welcome Pastor Peter Morton uh, to come and share the word of God. He is an amazing man of God. Though he's a great leader, he is a down-to-earth man. This morning, we, we are so happy to have him speak the word of God. So if you have your Bible or your devices, get them ready as we are going to listen to him speak on the book of Peter by Pastor Peter Morton. Hey, good morning, Pukekohe Church. Hey, it's so good to be with you this morning. And uh, wherever you're watching from today, it's great to have you with us. Pastor Peter here. And uh, excited that uh, today is my very first time um, being on this new live stream for Pukekohe, which we just started a couple of weeks ago. And uh, really stoked to be here with you this morning. I mean, it's a little bit weird. Obviously, we still can't meet together as a church the way that we normally do. So, you know, communicating and doing this sort of live stream thing is what we're kind of doing in the interim. Can't wait till we all can be back together again and and uh, see one another's faces. But uh, it's been cool, really and been enjoying seeing uh, some of you guys popping up on the, the Pakaranga stream and uh, seeing the odd video and things with your faces in it. And uh, it's just been, it's been awesome. But definitely looking forward to seeing everybody again soon. And a huge thanks to Chris and Judy for all of their work over this season, you know, uh, uh, with live streaming and having to kind of rejig and rearrange everything. It's been a huge job and they've done it just brilliantly. Hey, um, I'm uh, just before I get into what I'm going to talk about this morning, just want to let you know that uh, if you're watching this, on Facebook Live, um, you can head right now. If you've got questions uh, while I'm talking this morning, we've got one of our staff team uh, that are uh, sitting there on our Connect page and um, there's a chat box there. You can go straight to that chat box and click on it this morning and, and you can ask any questions that you've got. So if you've got questions about God or the Bible or Jesus or any questions that you have about God or church or anything like that, feel free to head right now to the, uh, the Connect page and you can chat with one of our guys and have your questions answered. And even while I'm preaching this morning, if you've got questions that pop up, feel free to do that or even just to uh, ask them on the chat right here and one of our team can, um, can talk to you about that as well. So as a church, we've just started uh, to move into the book of First Peter. And I know that Judy preached a great message on this and kicked it off last week. And I'm just gonna kind of pick up from where she left off. And um, so uh, we're gonna have a read this morning. If you've got your Bible, you can um, read, uh, you can turn to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. And uh, we're gonna blast through a fair amount of Scripture today. And I'm just gonna pick out a few things that I really feel are important for us in this time and season and what uh, the Lord, I think, is wanting to draw our attention to. So uh, we're gonna start from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. And uh, it'll come up on the screen so you can read it with me this morning or you can read it in your Bible. And it says this, Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at His coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as He who called you is holy, so be holy in all that you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Since you call on a father who judges each work, person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him, you believe in God who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. For all people are like grass and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and deceit, hypocrisy, envy and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. And you can blast down to verse nine now. 
And it says, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood and a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. So dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though, though, though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day that He visits us. So there's lots in that. And if you want to, you can take that away and read it through slowly later on, you know, take it verse by verse. Man, I find that's such a powerful way that God often speaks to me. It's just to kind of take verse by verse and read through something really slowly and meditate on it. But there's just three things that I wanna bring out of this whole passage for us today. And the first one is this, that we would set our hope on Jesus's return. The Bible tells us that three things remain, faith, hope, and love. And uh, faith and hope are kind of similar, but they're a little bit different. You see, we can have faith for something, we can believe in something, but we know that we've got hope for it when our emotions get attached to it, when we start longing for it, when we start dreaming about it. Um, you know, as we enter into Alert Level 3, Pastor Judy, who is the best Indian chef in the world, makes the best Indian food, absolutely. And, uh, and I have partaken of her uh, delicacies many times over the years and uh, love her cooking. It's awesome. Anyway, so she told me that uh, she was going to organise a contactless delivery of Indian food to my house at some point when Level 3 kicked in. And I tell you what, you know, I've got faith because she's a woman of her word. If she says that she's gonna do something, she does it. But I have hope as well, because when I start thinking about how good that's gonna taste, my emotions start getting involved. I start getting excited about it, you know? And, uh, and that's really what faith is, what hope is. Hope is when our heart gets involved, is when our heart gets excited and we start to get emotionally involved in that which we are dreaming for. And you know, when it comes to the return of Christ, don't just believe that Jesus is coming back. Think about it, dream about it, hope for it. You know, some people don't hope for it because they don't understand. They, they think for some reason, some people believe that when Jesus comes back, everything's over. That, you know, the world blows up and people die. I don't know where they get these ideas from, but it's not what the Bible says. You know, when Jesus returns, everything that is wrong with this world is gonna be made right. I could preach for weeks on the return of Christ and how good it's gonna be for us and how much we should be looking forward and hoping for it. Because you see, when He returns, His work in us is gonna be completed. On the cross, He bought and He paid for our full healing, restoration and victory. We know that. And so every day as we walk with Him, we're seeing breakthroughs and we're seeing that progress in our lives. But you'll know that we live in this fallen world and with imperfect bodies and hearts and minds that are still prone to return to old ways. We, even though we are living from a place of victory, we're still very much fighting the battles. But guess what? When He returns, our bodies will be perfected. Our hearts and minds are gonna be fully restored and all that we hope for will be seen. So He gives us grace right now in our weakness, but He's also gonna come with grace to perfect us isn't that good news? You know, everything that we long for, the things that we are fighting against in our life, there will come a day, God gives us more grace than we could ever believe for right now, but there will also come a day when all things will be made right. That's why we look forward to His return. And then the second thing that Peter points to here is he says to live differently to the world around us. He says, don't conform to the evil desires. You know what, we've all got stuff on the inside of us that's trying to pull us back into old ways of living and we've got to keep fighting it. Sometimes, you know, I come across Christians who are asking, well, what's the least that I can do and still be saved? What's the, what's the bare minimum that I have to do to, to follow Jesus and to, you know, still get into heaven, but still kind of you know, have a party here on earth and do really what I want to do? You know what, as believers, that's the wrong question. Our goal as believers is not to try to be like the world and just try to, you know, do the bare minimum to keep God happy. 
Our goal as believers is to live holy and set apart. And you know why we wanna do that? Because Jesus paid with everything that He had to buy us the freedom and the salvation that we live and that we walk in. So it's the very least that we can do is to live out all of our lives as living sacrifices, as an offering to Him. You know, being a Christian doesn't mean just going to church and liking worship music. It means commitment to a lifestyle that's radically different to the world around us. And we do that not to try to earn God's love, but we do that as an emulation of who He is. Maybe you've seen little kids sometimes, you know, little, uh, little ones can sometimes, you know, put on dad's shoes or put on mum's jewellery or whatever. And they dress up because they, they want to be like a grown up. They emulate that which they want to be like one day. And Peter's saying, you know what? Get so busy emulating God emulating Jesus, that you don't have time to run around and you know, get involved in all this other stuff. Live a holy life, emulate Him, look at Him, be like Him. And as a result, live differently to the world that is around us. And then the third thing that Peter talks to us in this passage about right at the end is he talks about us knowing who God has made us to be. The last part of this passage says that you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. And so there's three things there. The first one is that we are chosen. Do you know that if you believe in Jesus, the Bible teaches us that that's because His Spirit has awakened us to His reality. We have been chosen by God. Isn't that an amazing concept? I mean, we often talk about us choosing God or you know, having that moment where we made a decision for Him. But did you know that He chose you? that God has got a plan and a purpose for your life and he's, He has lined everything up for you. One of my favourite verses is in Ephesians 2 verse 10. And it says this, We are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which He prepared beforehand for us to walk in. So what that means is that not only does God have a great plan for our lives, not only are we chosen, but He has so believed in us that He has gone ahead of us into our lives to set things up for us. That's how much He believes in you. That's how chosen you are. Isn't that exciting? When that brings us to the next line. So we are a chosen people, but we are also a royal priesthood. And this talks to us about what we are doing, that God has called us to be priests. Every believer is called to be a priest. And that doesn't mean that we run around with special clothes and you know, all sanctimonious or anything. A priest in the Bible, the priests did two things. They ministered to God and they ministered to people. And I think it's interesting that the two commands that Jesus gives those who are His disciples is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, mind and strength and love your neighbour as yourself. Ministry to God and ministry to people. So in living out those two commandments, we effectively are becoming priests. So we're called to minister to God. And what that means to minister to God is to, to worship Him, to honour Him, to put His priorities in your life. You know, and what I've found is that every time I put God first, it's always a blessing for me. Sometimes it's a struggle, you know, to come to that place of prayer or to read my Bible or to, or to, to worship or, or give or, or to do the things that God is calling me to do. Sometimes it can be a bit of a fight. But I have to say, man, every single time I've done it, I've always received far more than what I've ever given, you know, and uh, it's always such a blessing. Whenever we minister to God, we always come off better off as a result all the time. But our first thing is to minister to God. And from there, then we find the power to be able to then minister to people. We become the salt and the light in the world around us. And I know that as a community, you guys have been talking about being salt and light in your community. And that's who Jesus has called us to be. So that we minister to God and we minister to people. So we're a chosen people, we're a royal priesthood, and we are part of a holy nation. You know, there's something so powerful and encouraging about knowing that we're part of something bigger than ourselves. Earlier this year, before COVID-19 and social distancing and everything, a whole bunch of us went to the Spark Arena and we joined with thousands of other Christians across Auckland in a night of worship and prayer for our city and for our nation. And uh, I tell you what, just being there and being surrounded by all of these other believers. I mean, I love worshiping and I love worshiping in church with, church with our church family. But when you get to go to something that's huge and there's thousands of other believers there, man, it's amazing. Did you know that there's over 2 billion people 
on the earth today who are followers of Jesus. Isn't that astonishing? You know, the church isn't hiding away somewhere. We're not shrinking back into the darkness and just barely trying to stay alive. There's 2 billion Christians across the face of the earth today, loving Jesus, following Jesus, you know, walking out His plans and His purposes. We are part of a huge, massive nation of people all over the world who love Him and who follow Him. So that's so good, isn't it? You know, we are a chosen people, we're a royal priesthood and we are a holy and a set apart nation. So as I come in for a landing this morning, the three things that we really wanna get out of this passage today, number one is to set our hope on Christ's return. You know, uh, let's set our hope on that which is eternal, not that which is temporary, on the things that we know for sure you know, and we can really put our confidence in. And, and I'm telling you this morning, you can always put your confidence in what God says. And secondly, we wanna live differently to the world around us because of the hope that we have. We don't live the same way that the world lives because of the price that's been paid for us. We live a different life. We live a, a set apart life. And then finally, that we would know who we are. We're a chosen people. We're a royal priesthood. We're a holy nation. I'm gonna pray this morning and I'd love you to pray with me. And look, it doesn't matter where you're at today or what you would consider your relationship with God to be like. You might've been a Christian for 20 years. You might've uh, become a Christian 20 days ago. You might've you know, been watching this for 20 minutes or joined us in the last 20 seconds. Who knows? But you know what? The fact is that Jesus Christ died to open the way for all people to come to God. So if you wanna come, to the Father this morning. And if you wanna approach Him and pray with me, you can. And uh, you can see what God will do in your life as well. So why don't we pray this morning? We're just gonna join together in prayer as we finish up here today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank You this morning for Your Word to us. Help us to set our hope, not on things that move and shake, but on You, on the internal unshakable promise of who You are and what You say. We thank You for the day that You will return and that everything that is wrong with this world will be made right. Help us to set our hope on and to look forward to that day. And in the meantime, we pray for the strength and for the grace to live for you fully every moment of every day, to be that chosen priesthood, to be that chosen people, royal priesthood, a holy nation, to love you with all of our hearts and to love others as you have loved us, that the world would know that you are God. And today we give our lives over to you and we ask that you would come into our hearts and that you would lead us and guide us by your Spirit. Help us with the decisions that we're making, Lord, that we would put you first in our lives. And as we seek first the kingdom of God, that everything else we need would be provided as well. We pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, if you prayed this for the first time today, we would love to hear from you. And uh, we'd love to send you some resources to help you with your next steps as a Christian. So you can just head straight to our Connect page, fill out your details there and we will be in touch. Also this morning after this live stream ends, we've got a ministry team that's ready to pray with you. And uh, again, you can just head to our Connect page and you'll find a Zoom link there. You can click on the link, follow uh, the, the link there, enter the password and it'll take you straight to where our ministry team are ready and waiting to pray for you. Hey, it's been so good to spend this time with you this morning. And I trust that something of God's Word has, has touched your heart today and challenged you and provoked you to live for Jesus. Have a fantastic week and we'll catch up again soon. God bless. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Peter. That was a really lovely message this morning. <laughs> I've been so encouraged and I believe everyone watching uh, through our stream, uh, I believe that you are being blessed this morning. You know, it's uh, encouraging to read First Peter chapter 2 and verse uh, 8. It says, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. Amen. I've been encouraged. You know, I am a royal priesthood. You are a royal priesthood that we have been called to be a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special people. Amen. That's right. And God, as Pastor Peter said, we, 
we did not choose him. He chose us yeah. and he has handpicked us. That amazes me every time I think about that. And also, not only he has chosen us, he has qualified us to be the royal priesthood. You know what, Chris, I was reading uh, some portion from the Old Testament uh, about how God instructed Moses to choose Aaron and um, how he has to be clothed and everything. I was thinking, wow, there are so many things and regulations and rules he had to follow to, before he could come to the presence of God to minister. But today God has God is calling each each one of us as we are. And yeah. also one of the things that God told Aaron, the clothing that I'm giving you is for your beauty and mm. for glory. Amen. And this is how God has clothed each one of us with his beauty and with his glory when we minister to him, when we minister to people around Amen. us. That's beautiful, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes, indeed. Amen. You know, he has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. You know, he has chosen us and he has called us. He has taken us out, out of darkness to declare his praises. I'm sitting over here and I want to declare his praises. I want to declare his goodness this morning. You know, actually you might be watching or it's it, it could be uh, your first time this morning if you're watching and you might be thinking, what is uh, Chris talking about? You know, every Everything what God has done, that he, he, has, he has blessed us and everything he does perfect. You know, there is no flaw. He makes everything perfect. And we always, what God wants us, declare and say that he is good. His love and yours forever. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And also, but during this time, I want to uh, um, read out some word of knowledge, some something that God placed in some of the prayer leaders. Mm -hmm. And if you're watching this morning and if you feel, yes, this would apply to you, then please go to this page and connect to the Zoom link. There are people waiting to pray with you and pray for you. So please don't feel shy and connect and contact people who are waiting for you. And so the word of knowledge, the first one says, there's someone suffering from regular or persistent yearic. God wants to bring healing to this. Also for this person, the Lord wants them to press in and listen intently to what he wants to say to them now. He will give them guidance to where they are, step, where they are to step next. Oh, this last Part could be for another person wanting direction at present. He will be a light unto their feet. Amen. If that is you, please do contact the prayer people. Amen. Also, there is someone wanting or seeking what to do next relating to income or work. Get the impression God wants to use what's already in your hands. Yes. Some talent or experience that is not currently being used. They are reluctant to use it because they think they don't have the expertise, talent, but God will bless it and expand it. God will bless this talent and will enable income to flow out from the use of it. Amen. And there is one more that is, I feel there is a lady living in fear because she's afraid that things that happened in the past will happen again. God says, trust in me. Put all you have in my hands. Mm -hmm. I will give you peace. Mm -hmm. And I am your protector. Amen. And also I believe uh, there is someone, as I was praying this morning, I felt there's someone who is feeling anxious within yes. yourself, mm -hmm. within your heart, Amen. within your mind. Mm -hmm. and God wants to bring peace into your situation. Yes. He is speaking peace. Every storm that you are seeing around you, yes. he, is, he is telling, be quiet. Be still. I'm going to speak peace into your soul. In and if you name, need yeah. prayer, not only for these prayer mm. requests, but you want some prayer support from someone, please go to this page and there will there'll be a Zoom link. Just get that link and connect with somebody. Yeah. There, are, there are people waiting to pray with you.
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's really encouraging. Great. And I believe, you know, when we, when two or three agree, the matter will be established. That's what the word of God says. So please, you know, just send in your prayer request. We would pray for you. Amen. Yeah. Have a good day. Um, and we are going to see you again next Sunday at the same time, 10 o'clock at Facebook Live and at 12 o'clock on YouTube, the channel. Yeah. And especially if you're been, it's been your first time this morning, thank you for joining us. Um, we love to have you uh, in our river stream. And uh, next Sunday morning at 10 a.m. But before that, at 9.30, we have our kids program that will start at 9.30. You can go to the uh, River Facebook page or you can even go into the River um, River Church YouTube where there will be the link and you can just, your kids can enjoy the program. And I will see you all next Sunday at 10 a.m. God bless you. Bless you. Bye-bye.